Right, today's lesson is going to be about threading on the EV3, where threading is about running multiple lines of code or multiple threads of code at the same time, or at least appear to do so. So this is a program copied by a user that basically lifts and puts down the four motors, but all at the same time, and it's written like that. If I go to run this program over here, get that effect. He had two bricks cha daisy chains together with another four motors. I'm just doing it with the four motors because that's what I have without having to pull my children's projects apart and cannibalize them for parts. So what it looks like is that it's going to run these four threads all at the same time. But in reality, that is not what happens. What happens is it starts up this thread and it just runs this thread for about one hundredth of a second. Then it completely stops running that thread and it starts up that thread and runs that for one hundredth of a second. Then it completely stops that thread and starts that one up and runs it for one hundredth of a second. Then it stops that one and it does that. So it actually doesn't run the four threads at once. What it does is very quickly it does a bit from each one and goes around like that. And that's what it does in reality, even though it looks like that in user land. And the reason for that is, is the brick is a single core processor and it can only ever do one thing at a time. It is not possible for that brick to be doing multiple things at once. Right? It always just executes it. But it can appear to the user to do multiple things at once. Okay, there can be some things happening in the background that people don't realise. They don't realise the difference between these two blocks. Both blocks appear to set the motor at 75% power. But that's what that block does. It just simply sets it at 75% power and does nothing else. This block here sets it to 75% power, then it spawns a whole new thread that sits there working at the same time, checking its speed. If it speeds faster than 75, it will decrease the power. If its speed is slower than 75, it will increase the power to try to get its speed to be correct. But that doesn't care about its speed, it's just 75% power and whatever speed you get. Right. So it will spawn a thread that looks something like this. That's a very, very simplified version. But to give you an idea, it will have a variable that it stores the desired speed. It will check the speed that it's going. If it's going um, slower than what it's going, it will come up here and it will increase the speed by one little bit. If it's going slower, it'll go down here. So if it's going faster, it'll go down here and it will decrease the speed. Then it will come over here and will update the power level. All right, so that just goes around that loop over and over and over, checking the speed. If it's going too quick, slowing it down. But what you need to understand, although you put one block in there, that block spawned a whole new thread. So when we go back to our original program, back over here, this here looks like it has four threads. But what you don't realize is each one of these blocks also spawns a thread. So now we're up to eight threads. Right? Now it gets even worse than that. Okay, now something else people don't realize, when you just turn it on, it just spawns the one thread. But then when you go turn it on for so many degrees, it then needs to spawn another thread again that checks whether it's got up to that many degrees and to turn it off when it does get to that many degrees. So that block as it is now, actually spawns two threads. So if we come back here to our original program, what you'll find is that this block here spawns two more threads. This block here spawns too many two more threads. So for each one of these threads here, it's actually three threads. So three threads by four is actually 12 threads running here. Now the other user had two daisy chains blocked together with twice as many of this. So instead of being 12, it would have been a total of 24 threads running. And when you have a little single core processor like this, trying to run 12 threads, it can get bogged down and lose count of those threads. Um, there's a little bit more complexity in blocking threads and uh, synchronous threads and stuff like that. But for the simplistic, for the moment, you can understand how that little processor can easily get bogged down when you start running programs like this. 
you need to write your programs that are a little bit more friendly for the processor to run.